Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is talking about how to recreate a section of a scan. Now in this case, this is a, a GR86, uh, you know, a BRZ, kind of same car. And basically what I have is a scan here that was sent to me and it's got the, uh, the trunk or deck lid and their factory spoiler that's on it. And the user wants to create a new spoiler leaving this factory one in place. Uh, so this is a, a tricky process and obviously we can do this in quick surface. And I've gotten a lot of comments recently from different people saying that you know they can't really afford quick surface as, as a hobbyist and I totally get that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about um, how to do this when you're trying to create a new part that fits on a scan like this. Now, unfortunately, I cannot share the scan. The scan was uh, purchased by the user and it's just not something that I can freely share, but hopefully the process and the idea will help you. Uh, so the first thing is the scan, we make it unselectable. That way Fusion runs a bit better. Uh, the second thing that can help is changing the opacity down to 50 or 60%. That way, when we go to start creating a new freeform body, we can see it easily. So I'm gonna use the face tool and I'm gonna select the snap option, which will let me snap to the mesh. And I'm gonna to start to build out a new freeform body snapping to the mesh. So I'm gonna create a single face. We wanna to snap to two existing endpoints. And what I'm trying to do here is uh, essentially follow the line of the trunk. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. The user is not going to be uh, basically going all the way out to the extents of the, the deck lid, but we wanna get it pretty close. Now, this is symmetric in reality. So the way that we're gonna handle that is I'm gonna get somewhat close to the middle of the car. And uh, from here, what I'm gonna do is go to symmetry, mirror duplicate, and this is gonna be mirrored across the middle plane. We'll say, okay. And then from here, I'm gonna hide the mesh We'll go to modify and merge edge, and we'll just merge these two inside edges. And uh, that'll give us that symmetry line. Uh, so the next step here is to start to manipulate this to get it a bit closer, uh, essentially to this edge right here. So modify, you can turn uh, object snap on, which will keep it on the surface of the mesh if you want. I personally do don't really like using that option in many cases, but in this case, I think it'll work okay. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, move that here. And uh, this dialogue again, always in the way. Move this one down. And at the midline, we'll move this one down here. Now, the reason that we're trying to get close to this edge is simply based on the fact that the factory spoiler is there. And with the factory spoiler, we're going to have to create that lip. Uh, so it's gonna it's gonna cause some difficulty for us, but we'll deal with that in just a second. Uh, so I'm gonna turn object snap back off because sometimes you forget about it. And the next thing I'm gonna do is double click on the middle and I'm gonna insert a new edge right in the middle and say, okay. Uh, so from here, go to modify and pull. And I'm gonna pull all of those up to the existing mesh. So if we hide the mesh, what we have here is a pretty good surface representation of that. Now, unlike quick surface, we don't have a color bar to, to tell us how close we are, but what you can continue to do is you can subdivide it again and, and sort of pull it. The next thing I have to do is I need to start to create that lip. If I just subdivide the entire thing, I'm gonna to start to run into problems. So what I wanna do is go to modify and with this entire edge selected, I'm gonna hold down alt and I'm gonna basically pull back a little edge here, let go, and I'm gonna do Alt again. And then I'm gonna to go to a top view because this is gonna be a little bit of a mess. So let's go rotate that around. And you can see that we started to, to build that lip. Uh, and now from here, what I'm gonna do is uh, again, hold down Alt and I'm gonna pull this back. Now you notice it's kind of doing some funky things. And that's because in reality, it needs to, uh, it, Pulling, just pulling it back isn't gonna work. So now that we've got it, we're gonna start to basically begin to build out where this, uh, this section of it is going to land. So I put these two extra edges in here because I need the resolution to try to snap to that crease. And we really want the form model to follow the lines or the flow of the original spoiler. Uh, so these are gonna be 
below the mesh right now, but that's not really a big deal. We can move them around. But really what we're looking to do is, again, try to uh, sort of replicate the spoiler as best as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're not making something to fit the entire spoiler. But in this case, we just want to, again, get it close. So I'm going to pull this one up. I, I prefer to have it above the factory spoiler. And then over here, I might pull that one down. And then maybe take this one, pull this one down as well. So again, doesn't have to be perfect. But if we take a look at hiding the mesh, uh, you can see fairly good representation. From here, what I would say is make a copy of this. So copy and paste. And I like to do this when I have a low face count version of something, I like to make a copy of it so I can go back to it easily. Then I'm gonna go in and subdivide this entire thing. I'm gonna use simple in this case, you could use exact if you wanted to, but we're gonna, it's gonna change anyways. And then we'll go to modify, pull, select all the points, and that's gonna pull it down to the mesh reference. So what we're gonna see here is we now have a surface body that represents the trunk lid. And then the crease is really the biggest, uh, the biggest problem area that we're gonna have. So you can see the flow of these lines, some of them kind of get a little jagged here. Some of them are okay. Uh, so what this tells me is I need to do some manual modifications and try to smooth this out. Uh, what I would say with a tool like Fusion, trying to do this manually, you're likely never going to perfectly replicate that. Uh, what usually would happen is you go to utilities, uh, make uniform and let it sort of normalize this stuff out if possible. And from a top view, uh, we would probably want to go and just manipulate these things. I always prefer to go back to box display mode, which is um, alt and one on the keyboard. This will let me see when I've got areas that are overlapping and I can fix them a bit easier. So uh, if we look here, there's likely a all right, let's see if we can get into it. Let me go back to a top view. Let's see. So what we want to do is work on these. So I'm going to go to top view and try to get this so that it just flows a bit better. Uh, so this edge, I'm going to start to pull out. And what I'm looking to do is uh, to essentially get all these points to somewhat line up. They don't have to perfectly line up, but they, when you start to pull down to a mesh reference, it, on the edges especially, it can get pretty ugly. I'm gonna go um, look in here, probably not great here as well. So you can kind of see these look like they maybe started to overlap. You can see how ugly it got here when it pulled it down to the mesh. Uh, so again, what I would say is this is not the perfect tool. And I, I know I sort of echo that a lot, but if you have to use it, there's going to be some brute force involved. So I'm going to go back to smooth display, bring back the mesh reference. And you can kind of see what happened here. It is, uh, we really want to kind of smooth these things out. Another thing you can do is you can always double click on an edge and delete it. And when you delete it, you can try, uh, try again to add an additional edge in there. Uh, you know, so for example, I could take this one and say, add a beveled edge. And then that edge should line up in the crease a bit better. And we can try to use pull once more. Uh, but once again, what I would, I, I know I always say this, but I have to caution you, this is not generally the right tool for this, uh, to do a complex reverse engineering on something like this. You can get it done, you can get it close enough, but it is likely not going to be perfect. Now, if, if that factory spoiler wasn't there, go ahead and turn the opacity control back up, uh, but if the factory spoiler wasn't there, and the, you know, the deck lid went down or uh, basically we didn't have to deal with this crease, then we would likely be in a better situation. Um, another option you can do is to make sure there are no points near this crease. So for example, if we bring our edges back, 
if I completely got rid of all three of these lines and there was no edges there, then the surface we create will just smoothly go over that. And that would be another option. It's not gonna, again, it's not gonna perfectly match that area, but really what you end up having to do is create an extremely high density body and the edges have to flow, this, uh, they have to match the underlying part. All right, so control four, hide edges, and that's gonna be a fairly close representation for that deck lid with the spoiler. Uh, so once again, I, I can't caution you enough on this that it's not a perfect solution. There are much better tools like uh, even Quick Surface Lite and the Auto Freeform tool is gonna be much better and more accurate. But if you do have to recreate a section of a scan like this, then that's the process that you would go through. Uh, so if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As I mentioned, I can't share this file, unfortunately, but hopefully this tip gave you a little bit of extra information on how to do this on your own. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.